Ladies and gentlemen, I'm awfully excited because my next guest is a veteran NASA astronaut who spent a record-setting 340 consecutive days in orbit. Please welcome Captain Scott Kelly. Hey, Scott. Nice to meet you in person. Nice. We live in a country great enough that they still stand up for astronauts. That's why I believe in America. We still live in a great country. Still a great country. Now, uh, this is the first time you and I have ever spoken in person. That's right. We've I've spoken to you several times when you were up on the space station, and uh, and I've actually spoken with your twin brother Mark. He and I landed the space shuttle simulator yeah. together. And I think you invited him here before you invited me, right? Uh, I think you were in space. I think we would have had you on, but you were in orbit. 340 days in orbit. Do you, given, given the state of the Earth, do you ever wish you were still up there? Every day. Every day. Do we show the view? Jim, let's show the people the view. So th those, are, those are your socks right there, right? We're looking at a picture of... These are my socks here, too. Those are your socks? No, those feet right there. Oh. Those feet right there. Those are your socks. I see them. The ones with the holes in them. Well, the holes in them. Now, are those special space socks or are those like just Land's End socks? I think they're Patagonia. R really? Yeah. Did you he ever hold up your Patagonia socks when you were actually flying over Patagonia? We would joke about it. We would say like, you know, I hear there's a really good gift shop down there where you can get like nice sweaters. What, did you ever get tired of looking down? Like, what are we looking at right now? It's the Bahamas. Oh, that's awesome. I can nice. tell because it's so blue and expensive. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> did, you, did you ever get tired of it? Like, after when, at what point did you get cranky after 340 days? You know, I never got tired of the view, but there was one day towards the end where I opened up the window and I see, you know, within a couple of seconds, a patch of sand that I recognized immediately as a spot just north of Mogadishu in Africa. And I was like, it's time to go, go home now. You didn't like, literally open the window, right? Well, not to let... Because that's a terrible idea. Not to let the air out. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, when, when you're up there, uh, what does it smell like in the International Space Station? Because the smells can't... You can't get rid of the smells up there. They linger longer without gravity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you wear cologne or anything like that? I didn't, but... Does, do the Russians wear cologne? Um, possibly. <laughs> or is it... I didn't check. You didn't... But you worked with them, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah? What's it like... They didn't smell any worse than us. <laughs> What's we it like sleeping in space? Sleeping I... is hard. Why? Because all day long on Earth, we are opposing gravity. And when you come home and you sl sit down on the couch to watch your show, for instance, yeah. and then, you know, you're more comfortable. And then later when you go to bed, you're more comfortable in space. You know, whether you're floating like this, working, or floating like this, you know, doing a science experiment or working on the computer or going to sleep. Same level of comfort, which makes it hard to go to sleep. Um, what, about, what about closing your eyes? I understand, like, there are cosmic rays up there that, that still sort of affect you when your eyes are What happens? Yeah, so there's cosmic radiation that actually you can see with your eyes closed, little flashes like fireworks. And then when you realize that that radiation is also going through your brain, it kind of keeps you up at night <laughs> a little bit. So when you close your eyes, there's still it doesn't get dark. There's, even even if you're in a yeah. dark room with your eyes closed, the little sparks going. Yeah, occasionally, off. yeah, absolutely. Wow. Did you uh, did you, you gain do you gain height in space? Is that what happens? I stretched. You stretch because you're not being compacted by gravity. Correct. So I'm like five six now. My brother's still three foot six. <laughs> well, I grew okay. Two feet. Well, that, 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 that takes me to part of, part of the reasons why, why you went up there is that you have a, a twin brother, Mark, also an astronaut. They, they have years of data on your health and on your, on, on your physical uh, uh, condition. And you guys did this twin study. So you went up there for nearly a year, 340 days. What, what was the difference between the two of you when you came back? Were there marked difference between like your bone density and his? So a lot of this study was genetic based. So this is the suspicion of the, you know, the hypothesis of the experiment was I would go up in space, I'd be exposed to radiation, a lot of radiation, you know, harsh environment, stress. I would age as reflected by my telomeres at a 
faster rate. Now, telomeres are an indication of what our physical age is. They're a little coil of protein on the yeah, end of the your chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they thought, you know, I would get older, and the suspicion was, as we aged, maybe I would look older than my brother. When we get to be, like, 60, he would look 60, and I would look 70. Uh-huh. But I think what, if that happens, what really happened is my brother got Botox. <laughs> it seems like the kind of thing he might do. Do you lord it over your brother that you spent more time in space than he did? Every chance I get. Well, here you are. Here you are uh, being taken out of the capsule when it landed in Kazakhstan. What, what's the first thing you want to do when you get back on Earth after all that time in space? Um, you mean like the first thing I could tell you about? It's not a news I... show, sir. There is... <laughs> we have no dignity here. I went home and I jumped in my swimming pool because I hadn't taken a shower in a year. So I was... Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I a just lot of wanted water in that pool, everywhere. I hope. There was. Right, because you yeah. can't immerse yourself in water yeah. in space. Yeah, for a whole year. Do you ever get tired of that squeezing water in the air and then sucking it out? Because that's every astronaut who goes up does that trick for us. Yeah, and playing with your food and stuff. That, that gets old after a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to space. Is it, is it, would you recommend it? I would. It's an incredible experience. It's a privilege. It's the, uh, you know, it was the professional, like, achievement of my life, being able to spend that amount of time in space, especially for a kid like me, who was this, you know, growing up, this kid that couldn't pay attention in school. If I was in school today, I'd be the kid with ADD or ADHD. Well, you talk about this in, in yeah. your book, Endurance, which is not only about your time in space, but about your life and, and what it took to get there. So you weren't a good student. I thought you had to be a good student to be an astronaut. You know, most people think that, and they think that... Uh, <laughs> That, uh, you know, you're the smartest kid in the class growing up, but I was the exact opposite, you know, looking out the window, daydreaming, and it wasn't until I was in college and I picked up the book, The Right Stuff, and it, um, you know, inspired me that I could do more if I could only be a better student. Did you end up meeting any of the guys who were profiled in The Right Stuff? Abs yeah, absolutely, over the years, yeah. Wow, did you, did you tell them this is what inspired me to be an astronaut? No, I didn't. <laughs> I told Tom Wolf though. I actually you called. You told Tom Wolf. I okay. told Tom Wolf. Yeah. Okay. So if there are other kids out there who might be a little ADD, who might be staring out the window, there's hope for them if they just they just buckle down. They they could stare down at their this socks. window too. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being thanks, here. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for going there. Appreciate it. Endurance. It's out now. Captain Scott Kelly, everybody. We'll be right back.